So this blacksmith hammer was one of the several hammers and axes that I got in a, a lot from eBay. And before I could stick it in a Vaporust, I needed to get this handle part out. There was something in there. There it is. Look at this. Look at how big this thing is. First I was thinking it was coming from the top. There's one big spike. You'll see though. This was definitely the most difficult uh, head removal I've had with, with an axe or a hammer. There's the first wedge. Not the one that was sticking out, the spike. What's that? There's a couple other things in there. <laughs> so there's the second wedge. Yeah, a regular wedge. And then for some reason this big spike. That's the other half of the one that broke off. And there we have it. Nice and cleaned out. So if you haven't seen my Evaporest video where I soaked all of these and cleaned them up and kind of showed things, you'll get a bit of a review here. The Evaporest here was still nice and yellow, but after two days, you can see how dark black that is. I've used it since that blackness, and it still works. Evaporust says that you can use the one gallon for up to half a pound of rust. And even though it's black now, I've, I've used it a couple times since and it's worked great. So for this head, I wanted to do a couple things. I wanted to polish up some of it, but leave the sides. I really liked the texture that was on the sides of this hammer. So I sanded up parts of it and then on the sides I just used the wire brush to kind of clean it up and get everything, any debris or any rust out of some of the pockets and holes. I wanted to do a two-tone look on this. So as I got ready for the two-tone I, I polished things up up to a 400 grit sandpaper wet dry this was really just to clean it up get the ends and the top and the sides that I'm sanding nice and clean you can see the rough edges there though on the side before I do the perma blue I soaked it cleaned it up a little bit with isopropyl alcohol. The perma blue my goal is to to get the the top, the sides, the bottom and the two heads on the hammer but to leave the bevels on the side. So once I had put on the perma blue, I needed to clean those bevels back up so that they kept the original silver color. So after polishing them up that really finished up the head. So in comparison to the cobbler's hammer that I did, if you haven't seen that video there'll probably be a link at the end of the video for it. But the cobbler's hammer blackened up quite a bit with the perma blue whereas this hammer really didn't absorb it as much. I don't I don't know if it's because maybe there's a higher carbon ratio in the cobbler's hammer. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it is that reacts in there. If you know, let me know in the comments. I'd love to, I'd love to know why some metal turns really dark and others don't. This hammer was really hard to get the, the perma black 
perma blue I mean to to show much so here I'm I'm marking out the handle the areas that I want to chop off or clean up this this handle is the remainder of a double bit axe handle the top portion of it I used to create the handle for my 200 year old half hatchet um, again, that's another video that you can watch. There may be a link at the end of the video for it, or you can look in, in on my channel and find that one. So this is the other half. I'm just marking the head, laying out the lines I need to clean out and carve out to be able to create the, the handle shape that I want from this. This is a really nice old piece of hickory, and... I, I love the, the kind of darker red color that it has. It's it's a really nice, solid old handle. So here's the half hatchet, actually. So the handle on this is the top half of what used to be a double bit axe handle. So I'm using this hatchet with the top half of this handle to cut a new handle from the bottom part of the handle. And I'm just... Um, kind of doing uh, kind of a, a squared out version of the shape that I want. When, when I'm carving on these, uh, and it may not, not be obvious with the, the high speed version here, but you have to be really careful about the grain of the wood when you're, when you're carving with a, a hatchet. You really have to go with the flow and make sure that you're, the flow of the grain, and make sure that you're not um, cutting into a, a grain that is going to split into an area that you don't want to carve away. So you have to swap the direction, which you can see me doing here. Right now I'm holding it on the, the end where the head will go and flipping it back and forth depending on the grain of the wood. You need to really carve with, with the grain and make sure that you're not going to split out the other way. So once I did that, once I got that rough shape with the hatchet, I just uh, cleaned up the edges, rounded it off on my 4 inch belt sander and then took it to my 1 inch belt just to clean up and smooth it up. I have a lower grit, I have like a 50 grit on the 4 inch belt sander on this 1 inch, it's a 80 grit. It's a used 80 grit so it's probably more like uh, I don't know 120 or something um, then I just cleaned it up a bit I took it uh, this is a 120 grit sandpaper cleaned up the handle I did take then a 220 to it also to smooth it out and just finish up the handle I'm just setting it in the vise so I can cut the curve cut in the top of the handle. What I, I missed editing or missed filming somehow, I'm not sure how I missed it, was the fitting of the head and getting it just right for the, the hammer head. Uh, it was a process of, of sticking it in a little bit, cleaning it up, sticking it back in, pounding it out. A bit of back and forth just to get a nice snug fit. And then I also somehow lost the footage of me sticking in the wedge, which was kind of a bummer. Uh, here I'm just trimming off the top of the, uh, the, top of the handle that, that stuck out. I want this to be flush. I knew that cutting it, though, I would kind of ruin the finish of the top of the hammer, which I did. <laughs> and you can see it just a little bit there. And to get a real flush fit, I took it back to my 1-inch belt sander and tried to sand just the tip. But you can see there I cut a few other areas. So in trying to sand these out, it took off the, the perma blue finish. So now I'm just redoing that and getting it nice and blue.
the quotes around that blue it it's really kind of a gray although when you do put it in certain lights and stuff you kind of see a, a blue color to it i bet it depends a lot on the type of metal how it blues and how it blacks um, it probably depends to kind of clean up the the lines and even things up that that uh, triple lot steel wool really helps to to kind of even it out now just putting some boiled linseed oil on the handle I know this uh, chemically dried boiled linseed oil isn't good for your hands but I know I'm being bad here <laughs> but, but I really like the smell of boiled linseed oil I like the smell on my hands even uh, that might be bad I don't know uh, once I coated it, I just kind of dried it off, uh, rubbed some of it all over on the head also. Just uh, finished this up. And that's really it. Um, if you haven't already, uh, like and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, give me some advice. I love advice. I'm sure there's lots of people out there with advice. But look for opportunities to give those old things new life. And... Uh, have a good day. Watch all my videos. Subscribe. All that good stuff. This was a fun one. Ciao.